I'm Tuvain Alçekic, coming from Turkey. From the graphic, you can remember the red one. I'm uh, probably the manifestation of the political crisis in Turkey. Uh, I'm from Yıldız Technical University, and I have been working for uh, on urban studies since in Yıldız Technical University since 2002. So I have been a scholar since 2002. And academia was my dream job, so I had no nothing else to do. I didn't know nothing else to do other than academia. And uh, let me, sorry. Okay, uh, this is kind of the outline that I will try to just uh, point out in my presentation. Uh, this is the route. For, I mean, this is my journey to, uh, to Germany. Uh, my journey to Germany started in 2013. I have been here for three months as a visiting scholar in Humboldt University, where I am actually now working as a scholar. Uh, it was a three-month scholarship, but it was the beginning of this journey, actually. Uh, because in 2015, in July, uh, the first live when a live bomb exploded in Turkey, and I received a telephone call from my colleague here, where I have been, he has been my host uh, professor in that three months. So he just offered me to be, to use my sabbatical uh, for a year in Germany, just to see whatever is happening in the country. So my journey again started there. And in 2016, uh, in January, I have signed a petition. It was the reason why I'm in, I have been in exile or I have used this, I have been scholar at risk. Uh, in, after 2016, January, I had been interrogated in Turkey. Uh, but until the decision is made by the university and the persecution uh, perse uh, court, uh, I traveled to Germany in June 2016, and then uh, the political crisis escalated in the country in 2016 July, and the coup had happened. And I have been called back since I was in. I have been in. Uh, I have been working in a uh, state university, and as a civil servant, I have been called back because of the state of emergency. But I didn't respond and decided to stay here. And the decision that I have made to stay here was really, I get too much support from scholar at risk and in person from Sarina Rosenthal, uh, that has spoken a, few, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, and in September, after really August to decide, after deciding to stay in September 2016, uh, they provided me a um, six-month scholarship from Philip Schwartz Initiative. It was kind of when I didn't apply to an institution, or the institution did not apply on me, but it was kind of just substituting someone who didn't come. Uh, so that six months really saved my life, kind of, because it was the start, my beginning start of my career path in Germany. So then when I come to what happened since then, uh, so I started with being a visiting scholar in Humboldt University, which was my kind of sabbatical, uh, started from June 2016. Uh, and then six, seven months in Ruhr University, Bochum, uh, I have been a PCI fellow until April 2017. But then, uh, in between, in the meantime, I have been applying for jobs and for many other things, and uh, also for research projects. Uh, from a network of critical geographers, I received a uh, job call, and then I applied for that. It was really, I was lucky that it really fitted my experience and my uh, area of interest, uh, and I applied for this position. Uh, and I get the position as an VME here, it's Wissenschaft Mitarbeiter, which is like research associate. And I started to work as in a team of Horizon 2020, which was really very connected to my interests. It was a mobility-related participatory project. 
and I, I have been working in Turkey in participation, participatory planning issues. And I have worked there uh, since, yeah, from September 2017 until the end of 2018. And then in, at the end of 2018, I again received an uh, offer from a colleague here in Humboldt University. They were applying for uh, Einstein uh, scholarship for eight people, but with a contract, not like a scholarship. So I again substituted and someone who couldn't come, who couldn't manage to leave the country because of this passport problems in Turkey. Uh, so I again substituted another one, uh, but now with a contract, two-year contract in Humboldt University. So seems like a success, but I still have problems, of course. Uh, we had many challenges at the end. Uh, let me put it in like uh, five general, four general uh, title sections. So most of the challenges came from, it's like a general challenge of being a foreigner in a country which you're foreign to the language, to the local language, you're a foreigner to the general institutional settings and frames to the law. And also you have some personal challenges that uh, I have been a single mom for a while until we managed to bring in my husband, fly in my husband here. So I, I had to travel to Bochum with a kid. Uh, so it was the personal challenge I had. And also there have been, and there are still some structural challenges in the academia, in German academia, which is very different from the academic experience that I had in Turkey. So it's kind of not very open to apply. Or also we had problems with, uh, I have finished my PhD in 2009, which means it's almost 10 years. and it is kind of a challenge, an obstacle to apply many of those research projects, research funds that if you don't have a team already existing in a university, existed in a university, you cannot apply if you have 10 year, uh, 10 year PhD degree. So it's kind of challenges that we, I couldn't change, but uh, there were some other challenges. I think I have been successful. Uh, so. One is networking, I guess. Uh, I have to mention it is the most important thing because I didn't really never stop trying to extend my network within the academia, within the country men that I know here who are from the same country. Uh, but I have to mention and emphasize that I'm lucky because I'm in Germany, I'm from Turkey, and Germany and Turkey has some 60 kind of 60 year. Uh, history together. We have been here and migrated here since 1960s. So networking was the one of the challenge, but one of the success that I think I have managed. And the other challenge was when you're kind of a scholar, scholarship with, uh, for instance, in Ruhr University, uh, I had a scholarship for six months. I have been there, but it was really when you're just short-term temporary scholarship or have a scholarship uh, in a university or in a department or division, it's really the most challenge, biggest challenge is joining the team because you're working on your own, you have a mentor. If the mentor and the mentor and your area does not really match, the problem then starts because then you're alone and you have the challenges that I uh, counted in the first three, general challenges of being a foreigner, the general challenge of uh, the local language and your personal challenges, you're still looking for, seeking for apartment, a new apartment contract, and also challenges that your country is uh, creating every day. And uh, joining the team was, I think, the other success I have managed uh, because in the Horizon 2020 project, while I was working in the Horizon 2020 project, it was a teamwork. So I think uh, the main success came for, out of uh, this joining team uh, thing because now we are working on three or four um, articles, writing four articles at the same time. 
I think in this case also uh, the topic and the area we were working on within this urban studies things really matched. It was the, uh, I think, the success measure for uh, joining the team. And the other thing uh, I guess I could mention as a success is taking proactive action. Uh, instead of taking reactive action, yes, I have to learn the uh, local language, but I have to say uh, German language is a bit hard to learn in two years or at least to publish in two years. It's not possible. Uh, networking and solidarity within your community from with the countrymen, I mean, and also the scholars. And again, I have to say that I was really lucky here in Germany, just getting so in solidarity with my community, with people who are who already migrated since a while, since 60 years. I was lucky with that. And also, on the other hand, I was also lucky there had been many colleagues. I didn't know them from Turkey, but we have met somehow. So it was the part of networking thing I think we managed. Uh, and also, I tried to foster and promote all possible collaborations that we can have with my scholars, with the countrymen, and also wherever uh, there are some presentations or seminars that just to go and show up there. Uh, even I'm not presenting, just to show up and get networking. And on the other, other hand, I think one of the proactive action I managed to take was finding solution, solutions, not only for the existing problems, because there are many existing problems, and we saw some potential problems coming also. Uh, and what was the proactive action? We, I just realized that if we are not united as an organization, with an organization, we don't get organized as an only person, as just a refugee yourself, will not be enough to sustain for a future career. So what we have done was, uh, sorry, uh, we founded an organization here with some academics from Turkey, uh, who are already in exile, persecuted academics. We are, I think, enthusiastic learners and dreamers of a di different education system. So some of us uh, were already living in Berlin, uh, in Germany, not just Berlin, uh, living in Germany. And some of us has to move, uh, have to move after the political developments in Turkey. So we are we registered a non-profit association under German law since 2017, and which was which is really the most exciting part of my career path here because it also helped we organize and this is this is my really most enthusiastic project here and it's like my kids. Uh, so we uh, proceeded under this uh, non-profit association. And we are located in Germany and Berlin. And we offer researchers and students with limited opportunity to move around because we have many colleagues which are trapped and stuck, stuck in the country, cannot move. And uh, because of this passport issues, because of their passport issues, they cannot travel. So we try to uh, provide them some opportunity to uh, participate in online education also to students. And we combine the good uh, old ideal of academic freedom with state of the arts of digital communication and collaboration opportunity just provide us because technical uh, revolution has done this without passport, without countries, without borders. People who wants to engage can really engage. And now uh, yesterday we announced our new spring semester courses there. And our <laughs> mission was based on its commitment to peace in the world and living together in diversity. So I hope you can also have a look at the website. You can see the website address of university.com. So this is the enthusiastic project that we had, which excites me more than everything. And also this will provide we have now three uh, staff who is working with us. 
Uh, I'm working in a university, but in case we need some job, there will be some opportunities to give lectures and to do your projects under this organization. So thank you very much.